Hello, we have uh, one more topic to cover for the price elasticity of demand in Chapter 5. Before I do that, uh, I'd like to just stop here and do a couple of test questions, potential test questions. And there'll be two different kinds of calculations, uh, number crunching uh, for, price elasticity, for price elasticity of demand uh, for the exams, a final exam and section exam, quiz. And for first two up here, we'll be using the definition form of this because here I don't give you actual price quantity data. Uh, these two here, we'll be dealing with the definition formula, which again is defined as the percent change in the quantity demanded over the percent change in the price for both these. And what we have here is we have three pieces of information. We have the elasticity number, we have the percent change in quantity demanded, percent change in price, and up here I gave you two of the three pieces of information in both cases. Here I don't give you the elasticity number, but I gave you the percent change in the price, which is 2%. So if price increases by 2%, right there, then sales fall by 6%, determine the elasticity of demand. 6% right there. And so 6 divided by 2 is 3. The percents cancel out. We take the absolute value, and so it's just going to be 3. No units attached to this number here. I think this might be the only number in this class that are no units attached. But it does mean that any change in price would bring a 3 times change in your quantity demand and your sales. So on the exam, I would ask you, is this demand elastic or inelastic? And you would say, elastic. And actually, three is a pretty large number. So in the real world, we would say that's, that would be highly elastic. Down here, uh, I gave you now the elasticity of demand. So you just substitute 0.2 right there. And so we have 0 0.2. And that's equal to the percent change in quantity demanded over the percent change in price. I gave you the price change is 8%. So it becomes an algebra problem. What uh, uh, divided by 8 would be 0.2. And so this would be the percent change in the quantity demanded. If you can't see it, you simply would times both sides by 8%. So if I times this side by 8%, it's gone there. I times this by 8%. If you got your calculator, 8 times 0.2 would be 1.2. And it's a percent, because you have a percent there. And so this tells me that the quantity demanded it's going to change by 1.2%. The price went down, so quantity demand is going to go up by 1. Point. Oops, I make a mistake. I should double check my math. Uh, let's take out 8 times 0.2, and I did make a mistake. I thought it was too low. 1.6, always check your numbers. And this means that the price goes down by 8%, quantity demand is going to go up by 1.6% which makes sense because the number is 0.2, highly inelastic, and so we would expect a much smaller change in the quantity demanded compared to the change in the price. Down here now, I don't give you the percent changes, I don't give the, you the elasticity, and so we have to go and use the midpoint formula to, ant, to uh, estimate this number right here. We don't have this and that, these two numbers, and so now we have to estimate them. And so now we're gonna use the midpoint formula which estimates, and this would be the change in the quantity demanded divided by the average quantity demanded. Again, we don't care which way the price is going. We have no starting number. We just take the average, and then we take the change in the price over the average price. And so the change in the quantity, we're going from uh, 3,000 to 5,000, or 5,000 to 3,000, either way, the difference is 2,000, so the change is 2,000 tables. We can leave the tables off, because again, we have tables over tables, it's all going to cancel. And then the average of these two numbers, uh, 5 and 3, is right smack in the middle, that would be 4,000. If you can't see it, add them, or add them up and divide by 2. And when I see zeros like that, I just want to cross them out. And then the change in the price, the price change is between 300 and 400, that's $100. And the average of 300 and 400 is right in the middle, that'd be 350. 
And so now we have uh, 2 over 4 over 10 over 3.5. I can actually get that down to 1 over 3.5. I think I might have said that wrong. Uh, 10 over three, uh, 35, now it would be 1 over 3.5. And this would be 1 half, right? So now we have 1 half over 1 over 3.5. I times 3.5 over 1 over itself. So it's gone down here. And now we have 1 half times 3.5. That would be 3.5 over 2, right? And if I have $3.50 and I want to split it between two people, I'll give each person $1.75, right? I always like to think of uh, fractions as uh, money or decimals. And so that would be 1.75. Let me just double check that. Calculator out, get 3.5, and then divide by 2. And that is 1.75. Uh, elastic or inelastic, greater than one, it makes it elastic. And those are the kind of questions to expect on the exams. Either multiple choice questions or I can put them in as short problem solving questions. Okay. Now we have the last topic for not the chapter but for the price elasticity of demand. And this really is the reason why we really studied this a lot, money. I mentioned that earlier. And so now let's bring in total revenue and the price elasticity of demand. We'll be talking about total revenue a lot from now on, especially when we get to chapter 7, 8, 9. And total revenue is not profit again. Total revenue is price times quantity demanded. Quantity demanded is your sales. Price is your price. Sometimes you have power over the price if you're a price maker. Sometimes you don't if you're a price taker. The quantity demanded comes from your customers. They decide how much they're going to buy at that price. You can try to affect that through advertising, through some uh, kind of um, marketing campaign, uh, coupons, things like that. But again, that comes from the customers. Now there's two parts to your revenue. There's a price component and a sales component, quantity demanded. And so whenever you change your price, there's going to be what I like to call a good effect and a bad effect on, on revenue. If the price increases, then that's good. Every one you sell, you get more. But there's going to be a bad effect, and that is that you're going to sell less. If you drop your price, the good, I, good effect is that you're going to sell more, but every one you get, you get less money. So whenever you change your price, it's not always win-win. You're going to have a good effect and a bad effect. So do you want to increase your price, or do you want to decrease your price? It depends on what the elasticity is. So if I tell you on the test, if uh, will total revenue increase or decrease when the price increases, and the answer is, you don't know. It depends on the elasticity of demand. So the answer could be, yes, it, uh, your revenue could increase, or no, your revenue will not increase. It will decrease. So let's look at the case where demand is elastic. Elastic means, again, the coefficient is greater than 1, which means the percent change in the quantity demanded is going to be greater than the percent change in price. So now if you raise your price, you will sell less, but because the quantity demanded is greater, you're going to sell less by a larger amount than the increase in price. So the good effect of the higher price, this would be a good effect here if your price goes up, is going to be outweighed by the bad effect of selling less. What's going to happen is that you raise your price, you will get more money for everyone that you sell, but you're going to sell a lot less because you're going to lose a lot of customers. Because why? Your demand is elastic. So if you raise your price, your total revenue will decrease. And that's always the case if the demand's elastic. Let me show this. Uh, let's say we have a case where we have a price of $40 and a quantity demanded of 100 And then we're going to increase our price to $60. And our quantity demanded is going to decrease to 40 Now before I go any further, I want to make sure this is indeed elastic. It looks like it is because we have a large change in our sales. But I want to confirm it by using, again, the midpoint formula. So the change in the quantity would be 100 to 40. That's a difference of 60, right? And then the average of 140 uh, would be right smack in the middle, and that would be 70. Uh, 30 up and 30 down would be right there in the middle, 70. And I'll knock off those two zeros right there, 6 over 7. And the change in the price is 40 to 60. That's a $20 difference. And the average of 60 and 40 is right smack in the middle. That's 50. Can knock off those zeros. So now we have 6 over 7 over 2 over 5. I multiply both sides by 5 over 2. It cancels out 
on the bottom side. So I have 6 over 7 here times 5 over 2 there. That would be 30. I don't really like to go to calculators. That would be 30 over 14. Uh, 14 goes into 30 uh, two times would be 28. And then I would have two 14s left over. So that would be 2 and 2 14ths. 2 14ths would be 1 7th right. So that would be 2 and 1 7th. So I just showed that indeed it is elastic. So now let's go over here and see what happens if we raise our price. And uh, I've got about over 10 minutes. Let me stop there and I'll come back for another part to show what happens with the graph.